Hello everyone, I'm Chester 44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Shadows of Undrentide. Last episode, we made our way into the Arcanist Tower, which is very large, apparently, especially because it's being invaded by people known as Shadowvar. People living in the Shadow Plane. Yeah, they took the Dark Wind. Now, let's head further up and see if we can find them. High Arcanist Chambers. Oh goody, so this is actually the end. Sure, why not? Oh, and we have a cutscene. Now, my minions, seize it! Yes, my Play master. You shall be ours! <laughs> Must I do everything myself? Powers are mine! The dark wind is mine! Your powers shall be unequal to your powers. Your blackness will let us return to the shadow. All power to the master. Some of you have been here. I sense another has come in search of our prize. Well, that was, uh, worse than I'd have hoped. Abandi! We claim this tower for the City of Shadows. The tower is ours. Not a single stone shall be left behind. Actually, you know what? Focus on the mage. And now... <coughs> please draw them back. So that I don't have to deal with them being in darkness. By the way, Deacon, how are you on your uh, ammo? You're going to need more. Once we finish here, we're going to need to buy you more ammo. Okay. Oh, there's more here. Deal with that healer. One more. Okay then. That's all of them dealt with. Oh good, a potion. I could actually use potions. I don't have as many as I'd like. Force field bars away. Perhaps we just need to possess some type of object before it will work. That will probably take us right back down once we actually have the dark wind. Uh, nothing else over here. Alright, anything else of note in here? Broken furniture. The rotten shortbow of all things. The City of Shadows. This tome appears to be a long-winded diatribe against a rival city. The City of Shadows, as it was known, was apparently founded by a former student of Undrentide's own High Arcanist. The unnamed student apparently claimed to have discovered a new source of magic he called the Shadow Weave. Though the High Arcanist claims to have discovered it first, a mage duel was scheduled but had not yet come to pass by the time the tome was completed. Okay, and here we have a trap. Well, let's bash it open. Uh, that's it for you. Take that, that works. We've got plus two darts. Clee Liar, a wise and powerful bard in the moonshades named Falatair, created the first of these instruments, using them to test and reward the student of his bardic college. Others have since copied the designs, keeping the name Falatayer gave them to honor him. This eight-stringed masterwork mandolin can be played to cast haste, remove curse, and sound burst each, each once per day. Useful. Deacon, you will have that. And portable door. Oop. A 
small stone door as if fit for a dollhouse. The phrase, here there be shadows, is inlaid with silver on the door's surface. And we created a portable door. Alright. The phrase, here there be shadows, is inlaid with silver on the door's surface. Pass through the doorway. Lair of the Shadow Lich. Oh, ominous. Alright, let's see. And suddenly Boss came upon the lair of his enemy. Huzzah! Go ahead and get your bard song out. I do not want to deal with the darkness spell. There are a lot of spellcasters here. At least I'm doing okay surviving right now. Take care of those mages. Pretty sure the uh, one in charge is casting a lot of spells to protect himself. And that's why he's not actually attacking me right now. Uh, that's fine, though. I mean, it's letting us kill all his minions. Now for the main leader. There he is. Go ahead, cast all your buffing spells while I slowly bash you. Thank you for allowing me to kill all your minions, at least. Oh, he's got improved invisibility. Oh, now he's gone. Almost got him. And there we go. That wasn't hard at all. I expected more. Alright, what have we got here? We got a chest with a bunch of scrolls. An armor rack with mirrored armor and a mirror shield. Sure. A large weapon rack containing the flail of Jurgal. Jurgal was a depraved man who hated life and everything it entailed. Assembling a small army of like-minded mercenaries, he planned to sweep across Faerun with weaponry that inflicted diseases and curses upon their victims. Though the campaign started well, it ended quickly when one of the men caught Jurgle's foul disease. Within days, Jurgle and the others were dead. That's unfortunate. Wait, didn't we actually encounter an altar to Jurgle? Hmm. And here we have Robe of Vecna. One of several items associated with the ancient lich, robes of this sort pale in comparison to the power of the better known and unique eye or hand of Vecna. Still, simply being kept in his presence was enough to impart substantial magical energies. Spell focus on most spells, not useful to us. And now we have the Dark Wind. Which allows us to cast Darkness and Shadow Conjuration. Well, okay. I guess I could have ended the last episode here, but too late now. Oh wait, unsuitable location. Okay, we have this the portable door here already. All right, let's rest, and then we can make our way to casting the ritual of the winds. We're going to buy some various items as well, however, in order to prepare something that does need to be done. Alright, here's the door. And let's go. Firstly, for, first things first, stuff to sell. Here. 
I think we can actually sell this in the Shadow Gems. I don't think we're gonna need them again. Hold on to Mass Cannon Flash. Alright. Deacon, you're going to get these scrolls because who knows, they might be useful. And now, we need to get you some bolts. Oh, those are in only in plus three. Only ten. Yeah, we'll live you let you have five. That should be plenty for you. Now, potions. I want to have a total of ten of these. There we go. I'm going to put these in there, and these in there. Those can go there. that works. We do have a couple potions of heal. Grab one extra. And I think that could do for us. Actually, what else do you have? Nothing in weapons. I don't think there's any potions I need to take. We have a Rod of Resurrection if need be. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Use the door and get out of here. We need to go put the wi put the winds in. Alright. What level are we? Really? Only 12? This would be a short episode, but at the very... If I ended it here, even though this is a perfect spot. But let's put the winds in. The wise wind, the dead wind, and the dark wind. Oh, that is very nice. Very pretty. You had best prepare y yourself before entering the temple. You do not know if its seal might close before behind you. This is true. We're prepared. Oh. Um, boss? Uh, yes, Deacon? What is it? Um, big fight with scary snake lady is real close, huh? It seems that way. Deacon wonders if he gets a chance to finish Epic Tale of Boss. Snake lady might turn Deacon to stone again. Do you want to stay out of this fight, Deacon? Oh, no, no! How Deacon knows if Epic Tale ends if Deacon not there to see it? You talk silly, Deacon thinks. It just makes Deacon think. Maybe Deacon can still be here to finish Epic's story, but maybe Boss might not be. I'm sure you can finish this. I'm sure you can finish the story without me. Maybe. It'd not be quite so much fun though. Just in case something happened though, Deacon thinks this be good time to you says something to Boss. Deacon wants to thank you for freeing him and taking him on great adventure. Deacon not feels like Cobalt stuck in cave anymore, and that all he ever wanted to be more than just Cobalt. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon. It's been an honor. Okay, boss. Let's go teach Snake Lady big lesson for turning peoples into statues. We shall indeed. We can start. Oh. With a final tremble, the massive city tears itself free from the desert sands. Under Eurydice's command, Undrantide rules the city skies once more. Oh, that's ominous.
Medusa handmaidens in a helmed horror. Okay, I think maybe we should take care of the handmaidens first. Oh, that did something. Alright, let's kill all the hostile creatures first. That's probably best. Okay, that's that one dealt with. At least these guys die easily. Alright, one more. I'm pretty sure these rituals are probably cast in order to do some kind of protection or something. Alright, that's all those. Now let's start looking through these levels. Let me guess, trapped? Why am I not able to actually use the chest? Also, there are traps all around here. Ooh, unidentified armor. Okay, it feels like I'm not actually interacting with anything here. Deacon's setting off all the traps. Okay, let's wait. Let's get rid of the poison. I'm going to have to reload here because something is odd about me. I don't know what it is. I will be back in one second. Okay, hopefully now things will work fine. Okay, yeah, now I'm triggering the traps. Yeah, and I'm taking a lot of pain now. There is some unidentified armor here. Once we investigate these four things, I'll have Deacon identify all of it, and then we'll see. Oh yeah, there are a lot of traps. Alright. We'll trigger as many as we can before resting. <laughs> but this'll be fine. Alright, we should be able to reach this fine. Bash open. <laughs> go. More unidentified armor. An unidentified dagger. An amulet of natural armor plus five. I think that'll go to Deacon. Okay. We're doing well. One more chest to investigate. And we'll only need to trigger some of the traps here. Oh, those doors are actually solid now instead of purple. Missing. open. And more armor. Fireball, greater spell breach, and more healer's kits. Alright. Now we'll go over to here and we will rest. 
And then, Deacon, I'm going to need you to identify a few things. Also, you're going to have that amulet of natural armor plus five. The extra natural armor, that's useful. All right, Deacon. You want, uh, okay. Identify my equipment. Now, what do we have here? We have Chainmail of Speed. Mirko the Fleet was a firm believer that discretion is the better part of valor, and proved it in dozens of engagements he proudly out outraced on foot with the help of his Chainmail of Speed. By the time of his death at a ripe old age, he had run from a dozen of the most influential battles of his time, and personally run from several famous villains. <laughs> Uh, plus two armor bonus and haste. Okay, with that we wouldn't need the boots of speed. Kumakawa. In the right hands, the hide of a displacer beast can be tanned to a suit of potent magical armor. These particular suits were created by the famed artificer Kumakawa, whose experience at working these skins is greater than most. In addition to their protective quality, the suits endow the wearer with the exceptional reflexes of a wary predator. Not too bad. Ice Talon. Weapons of this type are technically impossible since their blades are made of nothing but razor-sharp ice crystals. Most sages agree they are kept frozen by some sort of link to the inner planes, but this is ultimately just speculation. Ice Talon daggers show a jagged blade, and may have been part of a single larger weapon at one time, though the force required to shatter the magic blade must have been enormous indeed. A dagger with bonus cold damage. Squire's Defense. The famed paladin, Gareth Dragonsbane, grew tired of losing squires to freak accidents. All sorts of misfortune befell his shield-bearers, from being crushed by catapult stones to being trodden on by giants. He commissioned these suits of armor to give increased strength to his squires and hopefully prevent future losses. Nevertheless, only the bravest men ever applied for the job. Plus two armor bonus, and plus two base armor, and plus three enhancement to strength. And, uh, I think we'll keep that on Deacon. And red dragon armor. Nothing excites awe and envy like a suit of red dragon armor, but such notoriety also has its downside. These suits are magnets for thieves, and worse, they draw the attention of vengeful dragons wherever the owner travels. Plus eight armor bonus normally, plus five extra armor bonus, and fire resistance. That is immense. Another six points of protection against being hit. As nice as the Persuade bonus from the Armor of Command is, that is the best we can possibly get. This Amulet of Natural Armor will go to Deacon, as will these further scrolls. Also, Deacon. We're going to... Uh, you have plus one bolts, that's fine. No, no, use the plus threes. There we go. And we are carrying a lot, and we are looking very nice. <laughs> and you know what? I think that this right here is actually where I'm going to end this episode. I believe using this door will take us further up to the next level of the temple. A shorter episode, yes, to counteract longer episodes that we had before, but I think that is fine. Next episode, we'll head further up and finally, finally, deal with Eurus. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Liam Johnson and Deacon. This has been a Let's Play of Shadows of Undrentide, and I shall see you all next time.